My name is Peter Kreeft. I teach philosophy at Boston College. I graduated from Calvin in 1959. Uh, I went there because it's a great school, when I'm still convinced it is a great school. And what I've been doing ever since is teaching philosophy. There was a medieval cliche, which I love. Uh, we are dwarfs standing on the shoulders of giants. If we see more than the ancients, it's only because we have the humility to jump up on their shoulders first. So that's what I try to do to students, teach them to jump up on the shoulders of giants. Well, I teach what I love because the heart moves the head and the brain works best if it has blood pumping into it. Uh, and I love the classics. I love the whole history of philosophy. Uh, I love the border disciplines like philosophy and literature, philosophy and cinema, uh, philosophy of religion, uh, world religions. So I teach those uh, borderline courses. Uh, many of them have credit in the theology department too. I think my best courses are the ones where I focus on one philosopher, a whole course on Augustine or on Pascal or on Kierkegaard. There are certain topics that are rarely mentioned that when I talk about them in class, suddenly uh, they get very, very quiet and I know they're interested, like spiritual warfare or angels and demons or the nature of heaven. So I've written some books about those topics and I teach courses on those topics. Uh, the human heart is not sensitive to popularity. Uh, it doesn't get a rating in US News and World Report. So I try to keep my ear to people's heart so that I can listen to them and then they listen to me. I think the two people that I can't get out of the back of my mind, other than of course Jesus, are uh, Socrates uh, and uh, C.S. Lewis. So I've written a number of books about C.S. Lewis and I've written about a dozen books in which Socrates interviews other philosophers uh, and dialogues with them. Uh, I like to think in terms of what if. What if Socrates met Descartes, what would the conversation look like in heaven? People like the books. Publishers don't know how to classify them. Are they serious scholarship? Are they popular? Are they somewhere in between? But readers like them. I get a lot of good feedback. Dialogue is a lot more interesting than monologue. It's closer to the nature of ultimate reality, which is a trialogue. There are three persons in the Trinity, not just one. I find three topics surprisingly philosophical. Uh, the Red Sox, until 2004, uh, were paragons of wisdom because wisdom comes through suffering. Uh, Cubs fans will understand that. Uh, surfing is terrifically philosophical because it's a kind of mysticism. It's very easy to lose ego consciousness and have a transformed consciousness when you're on a wave. And Tolkien is, I think, uh, a kind of anonymous philosopher. I wrote a book called The Philosophy of Tolkien. Uh, the Lord of the Rings really implicitly addresses all the important philosophical questions. I, I am flattered and humbled by being put in the class of William Harry Jellema and Alvin Plandinga and Nicol, Nicholas Woltersdorf, who also got this award. I, I thank whatever minds are behind the choice for their choice, and I thank Calvin for its existence and for its generosity in giving me this undeserved award.